All right, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the Manhattan Community Board 3 Transportation, Public Safety, and Environment Committee meeting for July 14, 2020. The time now is 6.34 p.m. Um, my name is Paul Rangel. I am the chair for the committee. Um, and now I would like for the rest of the committee to introduce themselves as well, starting with the vice chair. Hi, uh, my name is Michelle Cooper Smith. I'm the vice chair of the committee, um, and I live in Essex Crossing. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I am Lee Berman, a member of this committee. I live on the Lower East Side, lifelong resident. Hi, I'm David Crane. I um, I live uh, near Tompkins Square in the East Village, and I'm I'm debating. I think I've been here 25 years on this block. Hi, um, this is Ellen. I uh, grew up in Chinatown and still live in Chinatown. Hi, this is Patricia uh, from Councilmember Margaret Chen's office. I've been living in the Lower East Side for about 10 years. Uh, thank you. Um, well, the, the newest committee members, I believe, are on, and that's Wendy and Tariq. Could you introduce yourselves, please? Hi, it's Tariq. I'm born and raised in the Lower East Side, newest member to this committee. Um, and I still currently live, I live in Nyta Reese. Thank you. Hi, my name is Wendy. I'm, bo I'm born here and I've been living in Chinatown for the past 25 years. Thank you. Is anybody else on the committee that I'm missing? Am I missing anyone? I don't think so. All right. Okay. Um, we have a packed agenda tonight. Um, thank you for everyone for coming out. Uh, before I go into the actual agenda, uh, I am going to start with the approval of minutes. Is there uh, any discussion about the minutes from the June meeting from the committee? Is that a no? Straight out? No? All right, uh, Lee, if you can do the attendance for the approval of minutes. Sure. Paul Rangel. Yes. Michelle Coopersmith. Yes. Lee Berman is yes. David Crane. Yes. Uh, Felicia Krishank. Okay, Wendy Lee. Yes. Ellen Lowe. Yes. And Tariq Ramos. Yes. Okay. Hey, great. Thank, you. Thank you, Lee. All right. So we are going to go into the rest of the agenda for the evening. Um, we have a quite the packed agenda. The first item being the debate of uh, FDNY and open streets. And then there will be a Q&A session. It's the third item of uh, open streets and open restaurants with the Department of Transportation. And then we will move to district needs after that. Uh, that being said, uh, I've invited um, anybody who wanted to speak on anything today up, on, up until seven o'clock uh, from the public on any specific agenda item. Um, the first person that reached out to me this past weekend asking to speak uh, on a specific agenda item was District Leader John Blasco. Um, I believe he is on this call tonight. Uh, John, you can, uh, you, I will give you two minutes. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, good evening, members of the committee. My name is John Blasco. I am a NYCHA Jacob Reese resident. I am a district leader in the neighborhood, uh, and I'm a founding member of the Lower East Side the Open Streets Community Coalition. So when uh, New York City Department of Transportation open, announced open streets on Avenue B, the general sense I was getting from community members uh, was excitement. Um, it was very difficult in the beginning because barricades went missing, were often broken, and the NYPD had a major delay in improving the conditions. Uh, through the coalition, all volunteers, uh, we have seen some major improvement. Barricades get replaced faster, 
their position in the correct spot based on guidelines from Department of Transportation, and more folks come out to enjoy the streets. This past Sunday, the coalition hosted a painting party to get community stakeholders involved in the initiative, and the response was pretty fantastic. Uh, Open Streets on Avenue B provides families and members of our community uh, who have been cooped up at home for months with space to be out and about. As a NYCHA resident myself with limited space due to construction and scaffolding being put up right now outside of my development, having Avenue B as an option to walk to has been exciting, especially when the East River Park has been filled with people. Uh, thank you to CB3 committee for supporting this this in this initiative uh, and I you know as a NYCHA resident as a district leader as a coalition member I look forward to hearing and continuing the dialogue with any stakeholder in the community about issues or questions that may come up thank you thank you John much appreciated uh, I'm trying to look through the sp speaker list give me a second I'm sorry I love technology uh, Laura is the next person I see who wants to speak on both agenda items. You'll, you'll have two minutes to speak on both agenda items total. Go right ahead. So now Laura's <laughs> um, I just want to clarify because I lot of wear a lot of hats in the neighborhood that I'm speaking today as a longtime neighborhood resident primarily. Some of you know me as the executive director of the East Village Community Coalition, and I also serve on the boards of Lower East Side of United Neighborhood Gardens, Lungs, and the Lower East Side Preservation Initiative. So as an existing DOT partner, I've been following the development of the open streets and open restaurants programs very closely. And John very well explained, you know, the the positive aspect of the open street when it first opened was great and you saw everybody pour onto it. Everybody in the neighborhood took, took part in taking care of it and it was sad when it deteriorated to the point where it didn't feel safe for pedestrians anymore. So it was very exciting to see the community just really rally around this project and try to figure out how to take it on themselves. Um, so when they chose a name and created a volunteer sign up, I agreed to be the group's liaison with DOT and they've officially had stewardship of the streets since June 27th, so only two weeks. So I'm hoping that the efforts in the past two weeks have not gone unnoticed because they've been significant. And um, I, I have heard from DOT that FDNY had issues with the placement of the barricades and I just would very much like to offer our willingness to work with our firefighters to come up with a solution that works for everyone. These books behind my head are very flammable. Response times are very important to me as someone who lives and works in the neighborhood. And then uh, in addition to that, I hope we have that opportunity. In addition to that, I just want to say regarding the Open Streets program, we're open restaurants program, we've heard some issues both from residents and businesses, and I hope I have the opportunity to share some examples later. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Appreciate you coming on tonight and reaching out to the office over the past few days. Uh, the next person I have listed that would like to speak is Sophie um, on agenda item number two. Hi. Yeah. Um, hello, everybody. I am also a founding member of Loisada Open Streets Community Coalition. Just a quick question. Uh, is the public able to respond after FDNY presents? Because I think a lot of us are speaking without really knowing what the specific challenges are. Uh, that's a good question. I will allow for some uh, public comments after public questions after FDNY presents, but the committee will get the first shot at questions. Uh, and then I will turn it over to the public for a few minutes. Okay, great. I appreciate that because uh, yeah. a lot of us really are loving these open streets. We've been working really hard um, to grow a group of almost 40 volunteers who are now manning these barricades 
taking them out in the morning, maintaining them in the afternoon, taking them out at 8 p.m. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a co-founder of the group along with Laura and John Blasco and several others. Um, I'm not gonna really repeat what they said. You know what the barricades looked like in the first week. Um, we had to call NYPD repeatedly to get them replaced, but once we got them, we've been um, taking care of them and nurturing the open street as best we can. Um, we are happy to hear FDNY's concerns and work with them, but it's crucial that we have a chance to continue to prove ourselves because we have come so far in the past two weeks and you know we want to take this further this is needed for social distancing for overcrowded in Tompkins Square Park for simply open air and the ability of people to have something to rally around and somewhere to go in this terrible pandemic so that's really all I have to say Laura and John really spoke to the reason we were founded and um, our goals moving forward and yeah, that's it for me. Uh, thank you, Sophie. I appreciate it. Um, uh, list, next person I see on my list is Dan Zajowski. Am I saying that correctly? I apologize if I'm butchering yeah. your name. Um, that's close I know you want to speak on item number two. Go right ahead. Yes, thank you. Um, thanks, all CB3 uh, Transportation Committee members for, um, for having us here. Um, I also um, am involved with the, the Lower East Side of the Open Streets uh, Community Coalition. Um, and I want to say Laura is a, like a superstar. She really got this thing going. Uh, there's a lot of us involved now, but um, you know, Laura had diagrams from DOT showing us precisely how to put up the barricades. Uh, and we, so we've been following that very closely. Um, if there are any problems with that, um, you know, I would hope we could hear from FDNY and DOT um, if, you know, if, if probably I would want to defer to those two organizations to put their heads together uh, and come up with a de design solution that we would be happy to implement then. So, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Dan Tynow, uh, you you're want to request on speaking on agenda item number two, Open Street on Avenue B. Yes, thank you. Um, I just want to express support for the people that are taking care of Avenue B. It's been a great um, addition to the open streets and it definitely has improved in the past couple weeks. Um, I also, I'm not speaking on behalf of parks, but I am a park worker that works in Park, Tompkins Square Park and it's been a, a welcome addition to allow more people to have distance uh, right next to Tompkins Square Park. So, um, yeah, I think that, and I know that they're willing to work with FDNY to uh, make sure it can work for them as well. Thanks. All right, thank you. Um, thank you to everyone for commenting this evening. Um, just a brief reminder, if, if you've not yet signed in in the chat box for attendance purposes, please do so. Um, I, that is important for what we do. That is our sign up sheet and how we take attendance for these meetings. So if you've yet to do so, please do so within the next few minutes on in the chat box. Thank you. Um, that being said, uh, I don't see anybody else who would like to speak in the public session tonight. Um, I'm going to move forward with the agenda item uh, number two, which is the FDNY Open Street presentation. Um, on Avenue B, and I believe Jack Spillane from the FDNY is on tonight. And Jack, the floor is yours, you're on time. Okay, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, thank okay. you. So um, I'm Jack Spillane, I'm Battalion Chief, Battalion 4, located on Pitt Street. And uh, with regarding the open streets is uh, we have a concern with our firehouse on East 2nd Street located between Avenue A and Avenue B. Um, they use uh, Avenue B as a main response route uh, to go north. And um, what they do is they, they come east, so they run west on East 2nd Street, go north, and then turn down, uh, usually um, they turn down any number of streets they get to the NYCHA buildings on Avenue D, but in particular, the NYCHA buildings on the north end of Avenue D, um, they use East 10th Street. So that's our main thoroughfare to go. But when Open Street started, 
we saw that they, you know, we, we worked with parks because initially they wanted to close from Houston all the way to 14th Street. We compromised on East 6th Street as being our thoroughfare, our, you know, main way of getting to Avenue D. But that's becoming a lot of turmoil, a lot of problems for those companies on East 2nd Street. Uh, their responses to Avenue D have been delayed on numerous occasions because East 6th Street is not a very good route to take um, in an emergency. It has three speed humps uh, that aren't marked, numerous potholes, and most importantly, a school. There's a school zone in front of there. So it's, uh, it's dangerous for us to take the rig down there on uh, the majority of the calls to the buildings on Avenue D. And that's the main concern that we have. Uh, you know, we would, we'd like the, the open streets. Like, I understand the open streets. Like, I, I, I get it, you know, because uh, it's an important thing. And I don't, I don't minimize it at all. But I also don't minimize our response to those buildings on Avenue D. It's a priority. And Avenue D, as you guys, as everybody knows, with the, uh, the, the, uh, the double buses and delivery trucks, and the vast amount of people on that street, it's very difficult to maneuver. So, you know, East 10th Street is our main way of getting to those North End buildings. And it's a, it's, it's a challenge. It's a challenge without Avenue B. That's a, the basis of our, uh, our concerns regarding the open street. Um, if you want to, we go there uh, dozens of times. I mean, we go there on average for different uh, different responses, gas leaks, fires, compacted fires, uh, EMS runs. Uh, to Avenue D, we go there, geez, uh, during the day tour, during a 24-hour period, we might go there 10, 12, 15 times sometimes, depending on the, uh, the situation. So, we, you know, our fear is that we won't get to somebody in time on Avenue D. And it's tough to balance public safety with public enjoyment because that's a big, because the open streets is a big deal. But we would, we would like Avenue B open until East 10th Street so we can get access to East 10th Street. And that's the main crux of our, uh, our concerns and our, uh, our argument, if, uh, for lack of a better word. Uh, thank you, Jack. Uh, thank you for coming on tonight. Um, is, before we get into our questions, do you have anything else you wanted to add, or or, or we can start our question portion? Um, I don't. Uh, I, let me just if you give me one moment. I'm sorry. To, I had the stats in front of me, just on my on my phone. I'm on my. Uh, it's not a problem. I'm on my iPad. Yeah, I, I apologize. There we go. Okay, so, so uh, going in for gas odors, uh, both companies on East Second Street will go there about four times a day. Um, same thing with the companies on Pitt Street, but that you know Pitt Street uses the uh, Avenue D to get up there. So the the companies on East Six, uh, sorry East Second Street will go there about 240 times a month for uh, gas odors. Stuck elevators is a, 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 one, a single company response. You know, they can go there between one and three times a day. So that's 30 to 90 times a month. Oven fires, we get about two of those a day uh, on Avenue D with both companies going. So that's, you know, that's about 60 responses in a month. Uh, well, per company, 120 for both companies. And EMS, uh, the Engine 28 does EMS runs to Avenue D. And they do about... I'd say eight to 10 a day in the summertime, maybe less in the winter time. So that turns out to be 240, 300 times, a, you know, uh, a month. So we could be going and we could be sending, you know, uh, we could be sending companies to the, to the houses uh, on Avenue D over 600 times a month, you know, and that's, you know, that's a lot of times, you know, that's a, that's a lot of people that I got to be, you know, taken care of. And, uh, you know, not having the majority, the length of uh, Avenue B is difficult. And um, 
And one of the other parts we were talking about, uh, just so, like I know there's open streets, and I've spoken with the community board about this, there's open streets in, um, on, uh, you know, Ludlow and Orchard, Rivington and Stanton, you know, between House and then Delancey. And we can get, our access issues aren't as significant there because once we get through the barrier, we're in that grid and the grid's open, it's open space. You know, we can, we can maneuver that. And we have one on Division Street also, you know, at East Broadway. And we can, once we get in those barriers, we're okay. The situation with Avenue B is we can't go from street to street to street to street through the barricades, you know? So it's not like we could take Avenue D anyway. And that's, uh, you know, we can only, you know, we can get to Avenue, we can get to the, an emergency on a block of Avenue D by taking one set of barricades down, maybe two, but it's not, you know, it's not practical to take four sets of barricades down and respond down 10th Street, you know, to avoid the speed humps. And with the speed humps, you know, I know they're not marked, um, and I know, it, I don't want to take for granted that, um, you know, a lot of people don't drive in those fire trucks. They're high off the ground. They carry a lot of materials, and they're very, very heavy. And every time we encounter one of those speed humps, we got to come to just about a complete stop and go over about 5 to 15 miles an hour and then start up again. And that start and stop, that start and stop is a delayed, just causes more and more delay to get into Avenue D, to get to East 10th Street, you know, and up in the uh, 12th and 13th Street up that way. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's the crux of, of our, um, our opinion on the, uh, Avenue B. And with that, I will, uh, I'll cease to you guys and you, you can open the floor, uh, whatever you feel is next. Okay. Great. Thank you, Jack. I appreciate it. Um, I, just a quick reminder before I go into the questions, question portion, um, I just wanted to say that the chat box is only for attendance purposes uh, in terms of what we do. It's not meant for any extra commentary or questions or concerns. I will go to the public at some point there, uh, after, the, after the committee gets their questions and you'll get a chance to ask questions of the FDNY at that point and I will limit it at that point as well. Um, but the chat box is not served to have a side meeting or to offer any extra commentary. Um, that being said, I'm gonna to move to the committee and be, but before to the committee, I'm gonna go to the district manager, Susan Stetzer, who's had her hand up raised for quite some time. You're still on mute, Susan. I'm sorry. Um, so first I was gonna suggest that the committee members might wanna, um, I know they've already received it, but I don't know if they've read the draft reso because that has information in there that they might wanna ask questions about. The other comment I wanted to make that hasn't come up is the city is supposed to be protecting our safety. And um, after this first compromise um, for 6th Street to North, the fire department has contacted um, their, I believe their headquarters and um, Jack, um, city administration about the safe, what they perceive as a safety problem. And they haven't received any response, which is why it's coming to us. I find it um, kind of disturbing that a safety problem um, such as this would be coming to us without a city response and looking into it. Thank you, Susan. Um, first committee member up is David Crane. Go right ahead, Dave. Try this mute on mute thing, waste more time. I, yeah, I'm also disturbed by this. I, I, I completely understand that the, that the speed bumps have got to be a terrible problem. Um, I was curious, I, I guess fire 
fire engines uh, travel pretty rapidly. But we've, we, there are other locations where there are, there are pedestrian impediments, like crossing the mall on, the, uh, on Allen Street, Allen Pike Street, the mall there. There'll be furniture that's actually in the ground, but the fire engine can actually just go right over it. Maybe it's because that's less than a, a small block wide, and you're talking about the whole length of, of uh, from 6th to 10th Street. Would people not get out of the way rapidly enough? I'm wondering if that if that is if that is the problem. This is hard. I'm going to stop now. Jack, would you like to answer that? Oh, I don't, you know I don't. I got to be honest with you um, regarding going over like I honestly going over the mall. Um, there there are some spots there that are conducive for emergency vehicles to go over. And um, if we cross the mall, it's because we're going to a street like right, right there. You know what I mean? Like, or within a couple block, you know, someplace where it wouldn't, you know, somebody that, that doesn't take more than two turns to get to. Um, but now as for pedestrians, like pedestrians do move like they do. Um, it just, if there's, if people are congregating and, you know, there's, classes going on and uh you know if people have if, people, if there's an organized thing being set up people are less likely to move and then that that can lead to i'm sorry to say that can lead to a confrontation because it's a stress stressful situation and we have people on the you know on the big rig blowing the air horn and and i'm not saying it's you know it's happened to me in the past so i'm speaking from experience and i don't believe it's happened on Avenue B that people don't get out of the way. I don't believe, you know, I, hopefully it's not the case. Um, but like, you know, some people are and some people aren't, you know, like conducive to moving. You know, it depends on the personality. Everybody is, everybody's an individual. Everybody has their personality. So I mean, personally, I, I, I hope it's not a problem with people moving, but I mean, I could see there being a problem with people moving. Um, uh, that's, I guess, does that answer your question, sir? Well, yeah, it, it does. Okay. Um, committee, does the committee have any other questions? Yeah, I, just to clarify. So uh, th this is to the, to the battalion chief. So this is really less about people getting out of the way as it is having to slow down or really stop, move the barriers at each street, get back in the rig and move and continue driving, correct? It's, it's, it's more about the barriers as opposed to people in the way. That's correct. Um, we, it's, it's the barriers. It's the, uh, the barriers and being able to um, have a smooth response. Um, you know, like the, you, you can't make up certain time, you know, and when someone's in danger and their life's in jet, and, and, and listen, I don't like playing this, you know, you know, this heroic narrative, because it's not, you know, it's not, it's not nearly always the case, you know, but like, you know, you know, I've, I've gone to fires and emergencies where we got there just in time and everything went well, you know, people were saved. And other times, you know, we didn't get there and people lost their lives. And like, it's, you know, I, I don't like playing this hero narrative on, it's not, you know, but it's, it's part of the conversation. You know, just, you can't make up time. Once you're on the road, once you leave quarters, you know, you get the run, you put your gear on, and then you go, you know, that's, you're losing every, every turn you make, every stop you make, you're losing time. And, like, you're going to stop. Like, you know, we got to stop at red lights. We got to stop. You got to stop at different things. People, you know, people – walking with the headphones on, they don't hear you. It happens a lot, you know, and like, you know, and our, our drivers are good. They, they are very, they're very skilled. We don't have a lot of accidents. We used to have a lot of accidents. Last couple of years, we are way, way down on accidents. Our people are, are driving very, very safely. And, uh, you know, but the starting and stopping, the starting and stopping, um, it's really, you know, those are the seconds that matter. Um, yeah, that, you know, those, that's the time. That's, that's, that's when it counts. Um, 
uh, uh, is, I'm sorry. I was, okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Michelle, I believe you have a question. Um, yeah, I, I just was wondering if, like, just now that we're thinking creatively generally about how we use the city streets, um, including, you know, things we've never done before, if, um, if, if we're going to be able to ask Jen or if Jen will be able to weigh in on, like, potentially other solutions, like reversing a street um, traffic that's, you know, or something like that. I don't know. I just, I feel like um, there are really good competing interests right here. And to David's point, it's like, I'm not quite sure where, where to go. And maybe we should get some more expert opinion on this. I mean, I, I don't, I think that um, uh, being able to, to get to someone's home before they're consumed by a fire is probably um, in a lot of ways more important than having enough space to walk around. And, and everyone can know from when we did the main meeting that I was and a proponent of the Avenue B being open, but we didn't necessarily envision it being a full, fully open street. We were thinking about it potentially as like one lane for the whole way or something like that. So I just wanna be certain that we're thinking about this holistically and not just you know only thinking of one potential um, solution. You know, um, Michelle, if I could, you know what, now, now that you mentioned, Susan and I had spoken to this a little bit earlier today. You know, if, if there's a lane going north, you know, if there's a lane going to north from 6th to 10th and we can get down 10th, then, you know, I mean, that's, I would think that would be viable, you know, but we got to have a dedicated lane just, that just goes north. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it ha I guess, it, I mean, I, D DOT would have to, you know, uh, set up the parameters, but, you know, that is, that's probably something that, now that I think about it a little bit more, um, you know, Instead of taking the whole street away, if we get a lane going north uh, for those four blocks, that's just as good as it being fully open until East 10th Street. You know what I mean? Thank you, Jack. Uh, Ellen, before I go to you, I, I haven't forgotten about you. I do know DOT is on the call. Um, Jennifer is on the call. I. I I think it's the beauty of this committee is that we can have kind of everybody here right now. Um, if Jennifer can respond to a lot of this, uh, that would be great. And maybe to present these concerns to DOT. Hi, I'm actually here and I've been hearing what everyone's saying. I don't have a response right now, but I can certainly bring this back to my colleagues because it sounds like there needs to be a bigger discussion to discuss some of these options and you know how we can make it work. So I, was, I will certainly bring this back. Ellen, I'm gonna to go to you right now. Thanks, um, this is just for clarification because I don't know how FDNY works, but um, so this particular station on East 2nd is responsible for the NYCHA complexes on Avenue D. And one of the complaints is that the other fire stations um, on Pitt Street uh, and East Second, uh, even though they're a little bit farther away, arrives quicker because of this issue. Is that correct? Am I understanding this correct? Yes, um, you are understanding correct. Just so we have a we have a response matrix set up um, for, and it's. Uh, it's set up, and we have procedures set up in place for units who arrive first and units, who, units which arrive second and so on, okay? But usually it's the first, second, and third units that have specific uh, jobs to do at different operations. So the, the firehouse on East 2nd Street is what we term as the first due units. They are the first due units at all the NYCHA houses north of Houston up on Avenue D. Okay, so when, the, now the company's on Pitt Street for the majority of those uh, NYCHA houses um, are the second due units and they come from Pitt, which is further away, going up Columbia uh, and then turn to D. And then we have units uh, on 14th Street that come in third, and then even the ones on uh, on uh, Great Jones Street, they'll come in. De depending on, 
it's like we like we the first and second do stuff is set up so that there's like a backfill in case those units are operating somewhere else they backfill with these other units but the the units specifically talking about the NYCHA complexes on Avenue D north of Houston Street the first two units are on East 2nd Street so that and that's how that does that um, make it a little bit clearer I hope yeah, I'm just trying to understand sort of how this system works, right? And and how critically important it is for, you know, your particular buyer companies to arrive before anyone else. So I'm just trying to understand that logic. Yeah, and so it, what, they, like, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Complete, finish, please finish, go ahead. No, I'm just trying to understand that logic in terms of how I should frame things in my mind, right? Um, because I don't really, I don't understand how the response system works. And so how do I prioritize like what is critically more important and from where, right? So when you're saying you, of course, want to respond within seconds, right? Without any delay. Um, and there are other fire stations around. So how should we sort that? So the, um, well, what happens is um, it leads to confusion on the, on the scene of an emergency. Everybody has a job to do, and, but that job, you know, it can vary from different conditions, different types of buildings, different, uh, you know, different types of emergencies, different, you know, so like, you know, it's, 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 it's funny. It's rather complex. You know, when you watch the fire department operate, it looks like it's chaos but everybody has a job to do and, and they set forth to do it. The problems arrive when units arrive out of sequence, out of the proper sequence. So if the people, the, the firehouse is on Pitt Street, if they get to uh, their first, right? And the people, the guys on the people, so the firefighters on East 2nd Street are supposed to be their first, but they're delayed and they get their second causes for comp confusion. And what happens is, certain jobs don't get done because people make assumptions that, well, he was here first, he's doing it. You know, he, well, he or she will be doing it, but now the other person might be thinking, well, I'm second, I'm gonna do my second job. So it's, kind of, it's like, it leads to a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, uh, how do I, I want to term this correctly. Um, confusion? A, a, a lot of confusion and a lot of like, you know, just unanswered, it, not, very, I tell you, it's not efficient, and it's uh, it's it's difficult. I mean, I've been doing this twenty five years now, and I've been in these situations a lot. And when we don't arrive the right way, and then another problem arises, another problem arises, it's just a, the it's just a boulder rolling down a hill, and it doesn't stop. You know, it, it just it's a it's a recipe for trouble. I, I so, you know, I I wish I could be a little more, you know. Uh, a little more eloquent about it, but that's where, what, what happens. So basically everyone has an assigned role based on proximity. So whoever is supposed to arrive first basically have already assigned roles, right? To which they will address certain situations adequately. Does that summarize? That is right? an excellent and succinct explanation. Yes, thank you. That's exactly what it is. Thanks, Alan. Uh, Susan, I see your hand up. Um, yeah, I just want to also disclose this is the second meeting on this um, with the with both uh, Jennifer from DOT and Jack at my district service cabinet meeting today. Um, we went through uh, this whole thing because I had questions for Jack. Mayor's office was on the call, did not make comments specifically about this. Um, I also just want to clarify in addition to what Jack said, um, it's not only who gets there first, but for some situations, how quickly you get there. Sometimes you need more than one um, station to respond depending on the size of the fire. And sometimes there's different fires in different parts of the district and one station has to go one place and one has to go another. And that's it. Thank you, Susan. Oh, welcome to the party, Tariq. Tariq, go right ahead. Um, Jack, I just want to know just two questions. One, I know Open Street is 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Do you have stats in the stats that you provided? Do you have 
any of any information or further information in regards to that time frame uh, in how the how your department is responding in that time uh, and the amount of times that they're responding. And then also did DOT consult you before putting Avenue B as an open street? Okay, um, I do not have, all my times are like anecdotal. I'm so I haven't been at the firehouse in a while. Um, I'm on vacation actually. I'm actually going back in tomorrow night uh, to work. But you know, speaking from experience, uh, in the summertime, uh, we can when school is out, we run. We run. Say when school is in session, we're busy from six in the morning to ten o'clock in the morning, and then we kind of have a little bit of a lull. And then it picks up at two o'clock and we run through 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night, you know, and then in the summertime, we run this 24 seven because if there's, when the children are out playing and everything and people are hanging out partying at night and, you know, like people are just out, out and about, I forget partying, they're just out and about, you know? Uh, so regarding the open street stuff, because it just started, um, it's more of a, uh, we're just, this is going on when we're, when we're really starting to pick up our uh, numbers of responses, okay? And then as for anybody consulting the fire department when this was to happen, um, we weren't, cons I can't say that, I don't know about the headquarters of the fire department, but I know we were sent an email saying, you know, I guess it was April that the entire length of Avenue B was gonna be closed for open streets. And that, you know, that was addressed by us in, 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 uh, at the firehouse at the battalion four locally. It wasn't addressed uh, from headquarters or anywhere else. We were told it was happening and then we um, proposed uh, it to change to East 6th Street. But there was no, uh, there was no uh, uh, forewarning or anything. It just, it just happened. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Tariq. David Crane. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna offer that um, it is not common for local firehouses or precincts to be involved in planning of things such as open streets. It typically happens at a higher level in the bureaucracy and the police department. They, they would say the brass. I don't know what the fire department jargon is for that, and. Um, Anyway, there's not a lot of local input usually. And your, your other part of the question is like, was this, were you part of the planning? The police department, sorry, the fire department was in the draft of the resolution, the whereas is explaining the situation. Um, it, uh, it's, it's written that, that the original proposal was 14th Street to Houston, all along Avenue B. And the fire department, had concerns about that because that would force the fire engine to go all the way to Avenue A to come back around on, on whatever street. And there was a compromise is what it's described in our draft that the, the city would do the, the uh, open street only north of 6th Street so that 6th Street would become the corridor. I strongly suspect that no one had any idea that the, that the, uh, the speed humps were there. Um, and the school zone may not have been considered either. I, you know, I just, uh, that's my suspicion. That's how it came to be 6th Street. And now what they have found over the past two months is that it's adding delays. And also when Ellen was speaking, um, your, your line of questioning, to me, the fact that the Pitt Street Firehouse fire engine is arriving before the 2nd Street fire engine indicates that the 2nd Street fire engine, it does have a much longer response time. I mean, measured in many seconds, perhaps a minute. Um, if, if along, you know, if they weren't able to get, if, if, if previously always Second Street was the first to arrive at Avenue D, but now it, the, the Pitt Street is often beating them, then that's, that's a pretty long addition to the response time. That's what I see. Okay, um, thank you, David. Uh, Jack, just a, a qu quick question. I don't know if you've covered this, just, um, I just wanted to run it back a little bit. Can you talk to me a little bit about like a, what the typical route would you, you would take to 10th Street and Avenue D pre-pandemic, pre-open streets? Uh, from the firehouse on East 2nd Street, mm -hmm. they, would, they would go to 
Avenue B and uh, straight up Avenue B to East 10th and then make a right on East 10th and work their way east to get to those NYCHA houses up there on uh, the top corner there. Is that what you're speaking to? Yes, and what's the route you take now again? Now we now they're going to make the right on B and then a right on C. I'm uh, sorry, excuse me. Right on B, a right on 6th, mm -hmm. and they're delayed getting through the 6th. And when they get up to – when they make the turn on D, they're further delayed. Well, sometimes – not. I'm not going to say every time, but, you know, I haven't been on a run on Avenue D when it hasn't been a, a, one of those uh, double buses coming down either direction. So there's, you know, they're delayed getting up Avenue D also. It's a, it's a true run. It's a, uh, it's an expedient way. Avenue B is an expedient way to get to the houses on it, the NYCHA buildings on Avenue, on Avenue D via East 10th Street. Okay. Uh, so you're basically asking for, uh, from us tonight, you would like to at least get 6th to 10th Street back. That is what we would hope to, yes. Okay. Committee members, do we have any final questions for uh, Jack? If not, I'm going to take some a limited amount of questions from the public. Um, if the public could raise their hands, I know some people in the chat box asked um, if they would, if they can. Um, uh, have a question for the FDNY. Um, I am going to limit the amount of questions because we do have a packed agenda tonight. Uh, and I know a lot of people are here for open streets and open restaurants and that's next up. So I do want to move this agenda item a little bit quicker. Um, I am going to start with Laura from the public. Uh, you do have, you can go. Thanks very much. So I just want to clarify for everyone that there is no programming assert associated with this open street program. People being in the road to the extent that they won't get out of the way because they're doing something is just not an issue. So okay. just wanted to clarify that. Um, so I'm interested in the northbound lane from 6th to 10th. I'm also curious just because I don't know why 4th hasn't been examined or, you know, a reversal of second. I, I feel it's a little, as much as I appreciate the challenges ex experienced by the fire department, it's a little weird that we're all sitting here trying to figure out how to make this work. We do know our neighborhood best, but I feel like the issue really look, deserves to be looked at. Um, what if we're not thinking of something, you know? But I am curious about fourth or reversing second so you can just get where you need to go and go up um well, i would fourth is um from what i've been told by the the apparatus operators from uh east second street fourth is just as bad as east six it's very narrow but uh and it's more time on avenue d which is very difficult to navigate as for turning around changing direction of east second street that could, that could be viable. I believe that's something that you could probably explore. Um, I'm, I could see that as, as working, as being a working option. Uh, yeah, I, I would, you know, that's something that uh, I, 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 just the first I'm hearing of it, but, you know, thinking about it right now, my, you know, off the top of my head, that's something that could be looked into. Yeah. Thank you. Could, could you repeat what exactly you're going to look into, just so I can have some clarification for that? Oh, I, I mean, if on my end, it, like they wanted, if DOT were to change the direction of East Second Street, that would probably alleviate some of these problems because they can, the firefighters can then drive up Avenue C and get to 10th, get the 6th to 10th, get to every street they need to get to. You know, fourth isn't really a viable option just to get to the, you know, the low end, the, you know, the more Southern end of Avenue D. But uh, if they would change the direction of East 2nd Street, you know, I, that might, might work. You know, I don't know. I'm just, you know, I don't know, but like, you know, that's a DOT issue. And, but that's, you know, if, for the fire department wise, yeah, I mean, I, that, that could, that could work for us. 
Great, thank you. Uh, Wendy, about Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, so, for speed was what I suggested. It doesn't have speed bumps, and I think it'd be great if we could give it a shot and see how it compares to six. I think it could be a, an easy solution, potentially. I understand what you're saying about D, but there's also fires that take place or calls for firefighters that are way below B, uh, 10th Street. You know, you've got nine other blocks there where you have um, emergencies. That's the point. And then the second point is, let's take, let's remove the parking on Avenue B on the north side, on the east side of the street. And that would also be another way to solve this issue, is those are private vehicles stored on the street. Some aren't moved for quite a while. And this is our public space. So I think that's another creative way to adjust this question, is removing the parking on the east side of the street. Thank you. Okay, um, I guess that's to me. Sure, if you wanted to respond to it. No, I mean, there's, I mean, there's not, if I didn't get the beginning of it, uh, East 4th Street is a, a tough street to go down, and then you're still fighting your way up to get to the north end. But, you know, they'll take whatever route they have to take to get to the southern end of uh, Avenue D. Okay? Thank you. Jason Gers, am I saying that correctly? Or is it Gers? Yeah, that's right, Gers. Thanks. All right, no problem. Um, I'm the chair of the volunteer committee uh, for Manhattan for transportation alternatives and have been, you know, participating with the group on the open street. Uh, just want to express a little bit of frustration with the process since, uh, you know, we've had trouble trying to figure out what the concerns are until now, but we're very eager to resolve them. I think you hear the group here speaking creatively uh, and I, I hope that DOT and FDNY can work together to find a creative solution on some of the things that have been suggested, um, such as either um, using 4th Street and perhaps Mr. Spillane um, suggested that it's hard because it's narrow, but maybe that's a place where we could remove parking or reversing 2nd Street, which is not a particularly heavy traffic street westbound because it's, you know, it doesn't really go that far east. Um, or some other solution that the DOT would, you know, have some insight into that we as, you know, ordinary citizens might not. Uh, but these are things that, you know, uh, maybe the board can resolve that FDNY and DOT uh, take it aside and try to find a solution that will both preserve the open street and uh, meet the, the needs of FDNY to respond quickly to emergencies. Thank you. Uh, I only see two more, more hands up. I'm going to start uh, with the public portion. Um, John Blasco. Hi. Um, I thought it was important for me to make a comment as someone who lives in Jacob Reese houses on East 12th Street and Avenue D right by Con Edison. Uh, first, Jack, I thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing the concerns. As a resident, I see the hard work that FDNY does. I really value and appreciate everything that, you know, that, that FDNY does for our city. Um, I just want to echo, I had put it in the, in the chat box. Sorry, Paul, I didn't mean to start conversations in the chat box, but I think that the East Second, like if DLT can really study the fact that we could reverse traffic on East Second Street, which seems also to be a very like low traffic block, so that FDNY can come out on East 2nd and go to Avenue C. I think that that would be really important. And as well, you know, as Jack mentioned, the, the northbound lane, I got to agree with Wendy. I think that if we're even looking at that as an option, I would urge CB3, this committee, to, to look at the potential of eliminating traffic, on, on eliminating parking on one side um, so that there is room. Um, even though the people are using Avenue B for recreation, like walking, it is still a public self, uh, safety, a public health uh, reason that people are doing that. It's because we are trying to social distance, because we are crammed in our, you know, on our sidewalks. And as a NYCHA resident, tell me, we are crammed in NYCHA developments. Uh, I invite any of you who have not been to Avenue D to come to Avenue D. Um, so. Jack, I appreciate 
everything you shared, the concerns. Uh, as a coalition member, we really want to work with FDNY and the firehouse to find a solution that works for everyone. Um, and I really urge the committee to look at reversing East 2nd Street as your primary focus. Um, and Jennifer, I hope that you can take that back to DOT and get us an answer maybe sooner rather than later. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, Andy Gilbert, I'm going to put you on hold for one quick second because I see our assembly member Harvey was raising his hand earlier. He's back on. I'm going to give him the floor right now. Go ahead, Harvey. Hi, thank you. I, I, I just really want to applaud everyone for taking the time to talk about open streets. This is really a public health issue that you've heard so many people talk about. And as someone who's got an office on Avenue B, and I see how well it's being utilized for open streets and how it's helped with so much social distancing, I really want to just really applaud the community's efforts here. I really appreciate everything the DOT and the fire department have been doing just to ensure our safety and our firefighter safety. I think we need to think of all creative plans I like the idea that we won't say about Second Street. I think Fourth Street and and you know is a good option. I think Sixth Street's just tougher because it's just a smaller street and the speed bumps. And I think you know we'd love to see. I'd love to see the time difference between going up Avenue C or Avenue D versus Avenue D. And the last thing is uh, to reach point about you know 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and seeing where the bulk of the issues are. If we really if we had to adjust the hours a little but open streets is really just during the day and maybe the, you guys just need it more at night and we can all like coalesce a little better about balancing open streets and the need for the fire department. I think open streets is a critical thing that we need to continue to work on. I really wanna applaud everyone for doing that, but I also hope that the fire department knows that this is a public health issue. And fire obviously and their job is public health, but so is open streets and public safety. So I just wanna make sure we find a good balance here. Thank you. Thank you, Harvey. Um, Andy Gilbert's going to be the last question I take from the public on this issue. Hi, I'm uh, Andy Gilbert. I, uh, I live on the south end of Avenue B, and I'm one of the uh, coordinators for the Open Street Coordinating Committee. Uh, I guess I had uh, more of a more of a suggestion, um, as in terms of what I sort of think could be maybe a win-win for both the fire department and the Open Streets boosters. Although I acknowledge that, you know, this is obviously something that I think as many people have pointed out, we should probably have, you know, the DOT and the FDNY should ultimately be, you know, the ones who work this out. Um, but as I recall, um, you've had mentioned previously that, you know, with the, um, the Lower East Side with um, Orchard, Rivington, um, Stanton, and Ludlow, that uh, basically the super block there was less of an obstacle for fire uh, vehicles to get there just because, you know, there's only one barrier and then it's sort of like a connected network. Um, I sort of drafted up a plan where basically we design a similar network from Houston to 10th and Avenues A to C. And basically, if we design the barricades in such a way that, you know, there's relatively unobstructed access for fire vehicles coming from second, up B, and then off of 10th, then ultimately, if you design the barricades right, where basically you block people on Houston from getting on to B, and then you block some of the side streets strategically, you wouldn't have to have any barricades that obstruct um, SDNY traffic. Well, at the same time, you know, it expands the space for you know, local restaurants on the side streets, uh, local people to walk through the neighborhood in different ways. And I think, you know, in this way, it could sort of be a win for all the sides of this issue. We get an improvement in both sides. So I think whoever ends up, you know, whoever we bring to the table to solve this, I think that would be something worthwhile consideration. Thank you, Andy. Um, if you have that plan, you can email that to the office. At, at, that'd be great. Um, Susan Stetzer yeah. and then David, da Susan Stetzer and then David Crane, last two. Susan, are you still there? No. Yeah, I'm sorry. 
Um, this is something I think Jennifer from DOT should answer or Laura or the coalition might have an answer. My understanding is that the city was looking to start placing tables on these open streets. So in two weeks, it may be very different than we're seeing it now. Um, do it, does anyone in the coalition know about that or can Jennifer speak to that? Hi, it's Jennifer. Um, so for, for open streets to become open streets for restaurants, someone would have to apply. Right now, I don't know if that was, you know, I don't know, I haven't seen anything on that location, but you're right, you know, in the future, within the upcoming weeks, if someone did apply on that particular corridor, there would be outdoor seating. But then I, in a bit, I will actually explain a little more about the open streets for restaurants, because that is not a uh, daytime thing. It's a uh, Friday nights and weekends, but okay, I'll give more details. You. Laura, did you have a response for that? I see your hand up. Yeah, sure. I'll, I just, I'm going to just point out that 7 to 10th is not commercial. It's the park and residential, so it's not an issue there. From north of 10th, which is not an issue for FDNY, there are a couple of groups of restaurants who've been talking about it, but they've yet to submit an application. So I, I don't think it's a, an enormous concern, and I believe FDNY has to sign off on that, um, that application as well. David Crane. Last one. I'm not thrilled about asking for Second Street to be, in fact, I will not ask for Second Street to be reversed without understanding the implications of that. We can ask them to look at it. I live on Sixth Street between A and B. I'm pretty sure that the uh, Second Street Firehouse is my uh, first, you know, uh, is, I, I believe that that firehouse would be the first to get to me. If they reverse Second Street, which by the way is travels the opposite direction from normal uh, even numbered streets all the way to First Avenue. I have always believed that was because the firehouse needs to be able to reach all the way to First Avenue and that you know this provided the most options. So although I think it's terrible that the, uh, the response times are clearly slower getting to Avenue D right now, I don't think that the reversing of Second Street should be our only option because I'm pretty sure it's going to have negative impacts on the other side. That's right. It's a hard one. I just, I don't want to ask for that only. That's all I'm saying. All right, thank you. All right, I'm, I'm not going to take any more questions from the public uh, committee. Uh, I don't necessarily want to keep this going. Um, if any, I did send out earlier today, twice, um, 1230, and then I believe at 530, a potential draft resolution for this, uh, for the Avenue B issue. Uh, does anybody want to make a motion to move it to the floor? Well, I certainly will move that uh, we adopt the, the, the draft that's there. There's no therefore uh, clause. And I'm unclear on what to put there, but yeah. let's start building it. So there is a draft that was distributed to the committee members before the meeting, mm -hmm. which Paul's leaving going to put on the screen now. And it just explains the facts of the situation. It yes. trails Give off me. after therefore. Yes. Give me a quick second. Um, do I have a second? Second. Okay. Thank you, Ellen. Give me one second, I gotta share my screen. Oh, Michelle's got it. Thank you, Michelle. All right, so I move to adopt the resolution and start debate on it. Committee, I know we've only had a few hours to digest it, but we've also had a lot of conversation and potential opportunities to put a therefore resolution together tonight um, on this, um, even though this might need a lot more beef considering what we've heard tonight. Uh, I am going to ask Jack a question. I, Jack, before I really go into the resolution, uh, you don't have the stats on response times, correct? Because you've been out of the firehouse at this point? I do not. <laughs> Everything I get is uh, response times like uh, grouped together. Um, 
I could try to find a way. I, you know, uh, I'll do some digging for you and see if I can find something for certain locations with the response times. But um, that's not like uh, that's not in our normal course of business, so to speak. You know what I mean? No, no, I I, I get you, Jack. Uh, committee, um, you get two cracks at talking about the resolution and your thoughts and ideas before we put a therefore clause together. Um, Michelle, go right ahead and kick it off. Thanks, Paul. Um, so one thing I would like to add is the avenues that the fire station is between here. So located on Second Street between Avenue A, or sorry, Avenue B and Avenue C, just so that's really clear. Um, and then my suggestion for the therefore clause, which um, uh, is down here would be something along the lines of what we've talked about, which is asking DOT and FDNY to seek a solution to this short of reopening Avenue B below 10th Street, if at all possible, including but not limited to potential solutions such as reversing 2nd Street, um, making a northbound dedicated northbound lane on Avenue B between um, 6th and 10th. Um, and exploring like a, a grid type system similar to what is in the Lower East Side um, so that we sort of, um, as people have said, put the onus upon DOT and FDNY to, to figure this out um, while saying that we support the idea that uh, FDNY needs access to 10th Street or, or Avenue C in a, in, a, in a quicker way than they have right now. Okay, anybody else on the committee wanna, wanna offer? Is it possible to get that language put in here? Yeah, even if yeah. Track changes or something so we can, thanks. Michelle, can you put that in while, while I know you're up on it? Um, because that'd be a good thing to look at. No, I have to admit, I kind of like the second street reversal idea. Um, but I and also in hearing what David had to say earlier, it, we do need to do, explore the, um, the ramifications of reversing such a street. Um, while it's helpful to increase the response time for FDNY, what does it cause in the long run as well? So I, I Think there needs to be some investigation from that uh, for that uh, by DOT. Um, but I guess we'll look at that during the DO um, during the therefore clause. Um, any committee members have any other comments right now, or do you just want to wait until the therefore clause comes up? I have a quick question, actually, for Jack um, about reversing Second Street. Um, my my understanding is if you guys need to go the wrong way up the street you'll go the wrong way up the street because if, if that's the fastest way to get somewhere, um, that's what you need to do. Um, without reversing Second Street right now, you can do that, I, I guess, unless there are vehicles that can't move out of the way uh, heading westbound on Second Street, correct? Uh, actually, um, it's very, very difficult because the firehouse is located on the west end. It's more to the west on East Second Street, and there's a construction site with scaffolding. I believe it's still up. I, I haven't it been is, there. Yeah, we, yeah that's uh, that that way it's constructed right now is uh, that's a non-starter for us. It, it causes more once you get one car in there and two cars, and to back them out onto Avenue C, it's uh, it's not it's 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 just not it's not a viable uh, not a viable way to respond right now. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So, Paul, no. Uh, Nope. Any other committee members have comments so far on the resolution? A point of information. Sure. If I can get clarification, that's not a fact. Um, what's this about a chain? I heard Susan use the word chain, and I didn't. I didn't understand what that meant like physical chains across the street that's came to mind is that it susan you want to answer that um, 
I don't remember saying anything about a chain. I think I said a, the idea of a dedicated first responder lane. I don't remember oh, saying maybe anything. it was lane. I'm, I'm sorry. It's hard yeah. to understand sometimes. On yeah, so page. there's been discussion. You know, the committee actually brought that up two months ago, having a dedicated lane. And that's what I was bringing up again, that you should just keep it, a, that you should be aware of it as an option. Committee members, anything else? Um, I know you have the resolution. Go ahead, Michelle. You just jump right in. It's fine. Um, I'm just gonna say one thing. If we do the north, if 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 we suggest, I'm just spitballing here. But if there is a northbound dedicated northbound lane, would that potentially mean that they could open the entirety of Avenue B then? Because was the reason that it was open until Sixth Street was to give the crosstown capacity for FDNY. Like, so could That's there be like for like a northbound lane between, you know, Houston and 6th and then completely close between 6th and 14th if there was a dedicated northbound lane? Jack should answer that. Sorry. Um, so if, I mean, if, if there was to be a northbound lane, you know, we, we'd like it all the way to 10th, obviously, because that's the best response. Sorry, the 10th, yeah, sorry. And then um, we also need, uh, well, we also need to be, be able to make that left turn to get onto Houston Street. That's the other access from Avenue B, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, if we get a, if we get a, a southbound lane there, you know, coming out of Houston Street and then uh, a northbound lane going north, I mean, I, I, I know I'm asking for a lot, but that would be the, you know, that'd be the best option. I mean, that'd be another very good option for us. That's something we could find acceptable. Yeah, I'm just thinking about ways that we could like accommodate both groups, like giving extra space south, you know, to, to compensate for, for closing one lane farther yeah. north. So maybe I, that could work. If I'm sorry, like I just so you guys don't understand, like, you know, the, the last thing we want to do is is take away something, you know, and I, I just, you know, this is a difficult thing. And uh, like we do appreciate your consideration on this. How about a dedicated lane from 2nd Street to 10th Street? And then open up the open up the rest from Second Street up. Yeah, that's a dedicated. Yeah, I mean, a dedicated lane from Second Street to Tenth Street would be great. Okay, I think we got everything in there, right, Michelle? It looks like we got everything in there for. Can you just scroll up to the first page? Um, does the committee have any questions on the whereas clauses? Anything, any amendments that you'd like to offer? Oh, you're putting in the, that's the amendment. Thank you. This is a draft. I mean, if that's if there's no questions from the committee, um, I, I guess we can move this to a vote. Uh, can we can we scroll down to read the the therefore woman last time? I'm sure it's a good collection of options, but I want to read it. Sure. Can we read it out loud, David, or you just want to read it on your? Own? Uh, well, either way. Okay, well, I'll read it out loud so that uh, the public and the committee can hear it. Um, since we just put it in, therefore, be it resolved that. DOT and FDNY explore options to give FDNY quicker access to Avenue D, specifically the NYCHA complexes on the northern stretch of Avenue D, short of completely opening Avenue B between East 6th Street and East 10th Street. Potential solutions could include 
reversing East 2nd Street between Avenue B and C to accommodate eastbound traffic, creating a dedicated northbound lane on Avenue B between East 2nd Street and East 10th Street, removing parking on East 4th Street to widen the street to accommodate FDNY vehicles, and creating a grid-like system similar to Lower East Side open streets to remove the need for barriers on every cross street intersecting with Avenue B. That last one, I'm not, I'm not tired of clear about. Well, I just don't know which, I don't know what Lower East Side open streets means if it's not open streets, all of them. So, is there another grid somewhere? This is the idea here is to prevent the need to be able to stop, have to stop at every block. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so. Can I clarify that since I was the one who had proposed Great, the um, the grid? Sure. Um, yeah, so I think the, the, the grid-like system in the Lower East Side is currently, it's um, Stanton and Rivington Streets oh. between Allen and Essex, and then Ludlow and uh, Orchard between Delancey and Houston. Are you familiar with the, the blocks there? I know the blocks. I haven't seen the installation. Yeah, I'm so basically the- Here at home. Uh, so basically the way that they do it there is that on Allen and Essex and then Houston and Delancey, so just at those intersections on the periphery of this sort of super block, they put barricades. And then um, after, the, um, after you've like passed that one set of barricades, there's basically, there's no more barricades in the internal intersections. So I think the idea is basically if we created a similar super block, basically between avenues A and C and between Houston and 14th or Houston and 10th, then basically um, we, would have, um, we would have barricades on the periphery along all the intersections on avenues A and C and then on Houston and 10th. And um, I sent it in the chat a um, Google map where basically I have a draft of one way that it might work. But if you place the barricades intelligently, you can um, you can discourage cars from using it sort of for rat running or as a through route. Well, at the same time, basically when FDNY, when they need to get a truck off of second, right on B, right on 10th or down onto Houston, if the barricades are placed in the right place, they won't even have to move any of the barricades at all because since we've blocked you know, the northbound lanes on Houston, since we blocked all the side streets that they don't go down, except for 10th, which we leave open for both the buses, the M8 bus and FDNY, then they can basically move unobstructed as they were before the street was open. And the only thing is like, whoever is, you know, walking in the street just has to get out of the way, which, you know, I don't think would be a huge issue. Um, and yeah, since there should be no, almost no car traffic on the street, that'll also, you know, that reduces the chances of them getting stuck in like congestion, people waiting for the lights and things. Thank you. I, um, I, I like it. So can we, after Elias Open Streets, can we state the boundaries of that example that we're referring to? Open Streets installation between something like that. Um, and this actually reminds me that this whole area is part of the slow zone, uh, which is why there are speed humps on 6th Street. The slow zone is a roughly 1st Street in Houston and 1st Avenue and uh, all the way over to Avenue D and then up, but not including 14th Street. Um, Susan, you have your hand up? Yeah, I, could I ask that the committees, um, consider a second, therefore it be resolved, that uh, since the safety of our residents is an utmost priority, as well as the need for open streets, we ask um, the city, um, particularly DOT and the fire department, to resolve this uh, issue immediately. Committee, are we good with that? Second, therefore, therefore be resolved. Yes, yeah, so if Susan would just would repeat it for me. <laughs> um, since, since the safety of our residents um, is of the highest priority, as well as the need for open streets, particularly during the COVID emergency, we ask that the um, city resolve this immediately.
Thank you. All right, committee, does, do we have any other questions or comments on this? David, did you have anything else that you want to add? Dave, your sound is off. Good grief. Is it still off? It, no, you're good. N now you're good. Now I can, okay. There's some button here on this new headphone, which is a nice one, but I don't know about this word immediately. I, uh, maybe it's fine, but it, the city, I think, moved too rapidly the first time on this and uh, made a mistake. And asking them to do it immediately, I really think that this reversal of Second Street is um, uh, potentially pro problematic. And I would want them to look at it carefully. I'm not sure it's carefully uh, incompatible with immediately in this. Well, if you ask for it in two weeks, they can certainly consider it in two weeks. Well, the word immediately is not, I mean, I'm not objecting to it necessarily. I'm just. Well, I'm, I'm suggesting maybe you, maybe you, um, maybe you want to change the word immediately. Without delay. Without delay. Without delay. Um, it would be fine. There you go. I just feel that they moved too quickly the first time and um, they need to get it right. Agree. I agree. All right. Any other final comments from the committee before we move this to a vote? Do you think we need to make it clear this um, creating a dedicated northbound lane that we intend for it to stay open, be to stay open above 10th and that there will be an open street in the other lane? Good catch. In fact, can we make this a list of bullets and that'll it'll be even clearer? Okay. After your colon reversing, yeah, just bullet, start bullets. Yeah, let's make that clearer. Do you want to say a dedicated, um, First responder, northbound lane. Mm. And I assume that the open street would be in the western lane because we're talking about going north and east, so. All right. And do we want to reorder these bullets and if we have any particular um, just keep desire it as to is. rank them? Okay. No, just keep it as is. Okay. All right. That looks good. Um, I'm ready to move this to a vote. Second. All right, Lee, um, count us off. Okay, uh, Paul Rangel. Yes. Michelle Coopersmith. Yes. Lee Berman, yes. David Crane. Yes. Uh, Felicia Krugshank. Wendy Lee. Yes. Ellen Lau. Yes. And Tariq Ramos. Yes. All right, the motion is passed. All right. Thank you to the FDNY and their representative, Jack Spillane, for coming out. And thank you to the public for asking and offering creative solutions. We appreciate your assistance on this matter. That being said, our second agenda item is now over with, and we get to have some more fun with the Department of Transportation in item number three with the open restaurants and open streets Q&A. Uh, Jennifer, Jennifer from DOT is here. Um, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. So I'm just going to give a brief overview for the two programs, the two application programs, and um, I'll start with Open Restaurants. So Open Restaurants started on June 22nd. It allowed restaurants to self-certify and apply for outdoor dining within the sidewalk or roadway space. Uh, we currently have over 8,000 and more restaurants that have applied. Manhattan alone has 4,000. 
um, that's in this program right now. Um, we, DT, and other agencies, including DOB and DP, have been doing inspections for each and every one of these establishments that has applied. Um, when these inspectors are, you know, out there, they are looking for the compliance based on the guidelines that were provided to these businesses. Um, for example, like on for the roadway uh, outdoor dining, the guidelines include protective barriers that are 18 inches wide, uh, 30 to 36 inches in height, um, and they are to be placed on all three sides of their space along the curb. Um, there are no gaps and they, are, they should be within eight feet from the curb. In addition to that, um, ADA compliant ramp has to be included because where the curb is and where the roadway meets, there has to be some kind of a way for anyone who's in a wheelchair to actually get down to the uh, roadway itself. Now that's for the roadway. Then uh, for the sidewalks, they have to be placed against the wall and they need to be, you know, whatever, Whatever, no matter what, they have to also have at least eight foot of clearance. This is for pedestrians to, you know, pass back and forth. Um, right now, a lot of the inspections are for the roadway uh, dining setup. We are going to be working on the sidewalks next, but that doesn't mean that uh, right now if there are any sidewalk uh, violations that you see that you shouldn't be reported. You know, any anything that you have noticed, they should definitely be uh, reported to 311. Um, I'm sure eventually it will you know, all of that it will end up coming back to us. Um, the any other issues that we do end up getting that's related to open restaurants or you know open streets, they should always be sent to 311. And through 311, they do end up re uh, routing it to the appropriate agency. Um, you know, for this program, we are continuing to work with all the other agencies. I mean, sometimes you know, I do hear from SLA if they see something and they send it to me. You know, DOB sometimes sends me something. And the same thing if it's like uh, something that we're unsure of, you know, sometimes DOB might have gotten it and then they send it to us and, you know, we do help each other out. Um, on our webpage, there's also an interactive map. If anyone hasn't checked that out, they definitely should. Um, I'll put that link uh, in the chat in a bit. Now, um, the other program that I was referring to earlier is Open Streets for Restaurants. Um, this was announced earlier this month. Um, under this application, it's for nighttime and weekend seating options for certain corridors. And what happens is that it's similar to open street, but in addition to the open street itself, we are also allowing outdoor dining space. Um, the hours for the uh, for this uh, for this application is between five to eleven on Friday nights and from noon to 11 p.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. The reason why we have this application is that we are aware that a lot of locations don't have the frontage because of uh, certain, you know, street furniture, or the sidewalks are too narrow, or there's any other, you know, is issues or impediments, including like sometimes, you know, there's a, you know, a bike lane in front of the business or a bus stop. So having this additional expanded piece of the open streets, it's to help them. So we definitely would like to encourage uh, restaurant owners on these blocks to apply. Um, I could also uh, put the link up in a bit. Um, I think as of the 4th of July weekend, we do have some in uh, CB3. Uh, Doyer Street between Bower and Pell is a uh, open streets restaurant. Uh, Orchard between Grand and Delancey. Broom between Ludlow and Allen. Mulberry Street between Broom and Hester and also Hester between Mulberry and Mott. All these are actually managed by bids and also the last two was actually managed by the Little Italy Merchants Association. So that's my brief uh, overview. I'm happy to take questions and I'll put some uh, links up in a bit. Thank you, Jen. Um, Paul just has to wait for a quick second. Are you back, Paul? I am. Keep going. No worries. All right. Okay. Um, I know there are a couple of people that had um, signed up to speak on this issue. Paul, do you want um, to have the public go first and then committee members? Committee members go first. Yeah. Yeah. I was about to say, um, committee, um, any okay. questions for Jennifer before I move to the public? And anybody from the public that actually had a question tonight, just put your hands up in the 
in the participant box. And um, I don't know how long I'm going to go with it, but uh, put your hands up and I will definitely try to get to you. All right, but committee, anybody has uh, questions for Jennifer? Um, I'm actually going to start with Susan since she had her hand up first, and then I'll go to Michelle. Thank you. Um, so, first of all, I want to say the social distancing has greatly improved since we've had the tables on the streets and the sidewalk. The huge, very unsafe crowds we've had, like in St. Mark's, and those seem to have mostly disappeared. And the non-compliance with the street seating is getting better. However, it is still really horrible. And we are spending a tremendous amount of time because the burden at this point is basically placed on community members and the community board to report non-compliance. Um, and I just wanna to say to Jennifer that it's not her you know, that's, that made these decisions. And I realized that they don't have staff to do everything, but I think if you're gonna implement something like this, you have to have the staff, instead of putting it on the community members and particularly then most of it actually does come to the community board. So we are not able to do a lot of the work that we're supposed to be doing because we're spending our time dealing with non-compliance issues and then either taking it to the council office who has been working with us and actually is taking it upon themselves to explain uh, to people that they can't have music on the street or it, you know, it then comes to me so I can follow up with the agencies. And I, I just wanna point out how burdensome it's, you know, I personally think it's wonderful to have it, but I wanna say the implementation is very burdensome. That's it. Jennifer, any response or would you like to respond? Um, Nothing she can say. Thing, well, <laughs> the only thing I would say is that, you know, it's one thing that we get complaints, but it's also know that these inspections are happening every day. And we are, you know, anyone that's from our team or from DOB or DEP, they are actually assisting us in this. I know that a lot of these inspections, they do go out to these locations sometimes multiple times in a week. Um, in the end, it's like they do end up getting, you know, a cease and desist letter. But then again, those are the same people who might end up calling me trying to find out what have they done wrong. I mean, this is, it, it, you're right, it is burdensome, but then we're also trying to help anyone who wants to help because they do want to be in compliance. Thank you. Michelle. Uh, thanks for coming tonight, John. We appreciate it. I know there's been a lot of changes recently. Um, so I have um, two, I have one question related to the restaurants and I, I'm going to go, I guess, a little off topic, but it's under your umbrella also about just open streets generally. So um, one thing is about the NYPD closures of streets. Um, it's it's uh, Fifth Street has been closed for a month and a half, um, and I'm I'm understanding that DOT is supposed to alert the community boards if that's going to happen for more than 48 hours. It's also happening on Pitt Street, um, so I, I'd like you to address that if possible. I know it's it's disturbing it's it's disturbing traffic for pedestrians, um, and then um, we recommended a lot of open streets back in May, and a very few of them unfortunately have come to fruition in this district, and it's one of the districts that have probably the least space that is what we were just talking about with avenue b so i'm i'm really hoping that dot can can make some new ones and do more outreach in the community to find additional partners and then the third is that there was a lot of reporting in the past week or so that dot sort of um silently changed the requirements for restaurants from not having any width requirements for the barriers to 18 inches and so inspectors were out giving restaurants 24 hours um to change uh, and this is these are restaurants that are probably already in the red and have invested a lot of money to do their setups and then all of a sudden we're told to do more. Um, so if you could address those three issues, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. So for the first one, the NYPD closures. Most of the time, I am my office is not aware of these closures. Um, from what I know is that sometimes the PD does do closures, but I, I think this is something else that I've also been hearing from other precincts or other folks complaining to our office. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a response to that. Um, 
it's something that I never got a, you know, if, yes, these are our public streets. You know, we would we would be able to know when they are closed. And but the thing is, you know, sometimes PD does close streets for any other particular reasons that may be related to safety or to, you know, something else. I. I don't, I don't I don't know in this situation if it's the same reasons why the other pre precincts may have certain uh, closures around their uh, precincts. Um, I, I I would think that it's something that maybe um, community board or anyone can try to ask the precinct themselves. Um, so that's for the NYPD closures. Um, your second one is about open streets uh, that you guys submitted. Um, I think we have looked at some of the list, but then a lot of it is application based as well. If we can't really find a partner that's willing to help us with that, then we may not be able to have those uh, particular streets, you know, you know, use them as a open street itself. Then for your last one, um, actually, I forgot where your last one was. Can you repeat that? Sorry. Uh, yeah, it's changing <laughs> the regulations for the open restaurants mm -hmm. um, on a dime with no notification. So with any one of these programs, we have always been evolving very quickly. The recent, I guess the recent, uh, what we recently did when we started the inspections, we also provided our inspectors with brochures. I actually will put that link up so you'll know what that brochure looks like. Because then what happens is that um, all these businesses, they would um, be able to look at the brochure and say, oh, these are the requirements and this is what they need to uh, be in compliance with. I know that um, a lot of those calls came to me. I was able to help a lot of them, you know, let them know that, hey, I know that you got this, but you can continue to, you know, I know that 24 hours is not fair. You know, sometimes you can't even get something within 24 hours anyway. Um, we, the thing is, I think what we want to do is that make sure that they got it, they saw it, and they are willing to quickly get that turned around quickly. Because sometimes, some of that stuff can be done. I mean, we're not, um, the re we don't, we do have reinspections done, but they, it's not within that 24 hours. Cause like I, you know, as we mentioned before, we all know that we're, you know, we are limited in staff and how we're doing all these inspections. And as I mentioned even earlier, there's 4,000, you know, businesses that have, you know, have these uh, outdoor dining and there's no way that we can get to all of them. If, you know, I'm, I'd be surprised if we, right now, I think we might have gotten through all of them at least once, but some of them must have been out there at least, you know, been visited at least twice or more. Okay, so great, thank me, you, and I just, sorry. I'll, I'll I'll put in the link for that brochure so everyone can also take a look. Thank you. And yeah, I just want, and I just want to say that the NYPD situation is like a little concerning, especially with what's been going on in the past couple of months, that it seems that the NYPD sort of operates as an independent entity without any oversight from the essentially the de Blasio or the mayoral administration whoever it may be and the the streets is just another sort of abuse of that and and we passed a resolution last month about police brutality and and I just I worry that the um, administration is not doing enough to, to to even the smallest thing it seems like closing streets that there's no oversight or knowledge about it so I just I hope mm -hmm. that you can take that back to your team thank you we'll do can Susan, I speak go to ahead. that so yeah, so that that is actually a city law about the streets, and um, I helped Alan Gerson write that law. It was right after 9-11, and I would suggest that we go to our council members um, with that in, in referring, referencing that city law. Thank you, Susan. Susan, do you have anything else that you wanted to say, or was that it? You, uh, it was just about the law. Did you hear me okay. about the law? Yeah, no, I, I, I didn't okay. know if you wanted to No, add I, just wanted, I just wanted to refer, because I was, I was involved in writing that law, so I just wanted to refer. It's a city law. It's not up to the police unless the mayor overrode the law in his executive order. Um, it should not be up to the police. Yeah, it is a bit concerning seeing how the ninth precinct kind of barricaded itself in and insulated itself, uh, considering we just addressed some of those issues uh, last month, and I have a feeling they're going to make their way back um, sooner than later. Uh, so DOT can, and our elected officials and those who are on this call tonight that represent elected officials, if you can 
let us know on how that city law is working out and why that's think, happening. I don't think we have any city people on the here. I thought I saw Pedro come on before. I'm not sure if he's still on. Um, I could be wrong. Um, I don't, he was on before, but not well, anymore. I think, I think calls to the two city offices tomorrow would be good. Okay. Um, committee, any questions for, before I move to the public for Jennifer? I'm playing the Jeopardy theme song in my head. Who's going? No? Okay, so I'm gonna move to the public. I see a couple of hands raised that want to ask Jennifer a few questions in regards to open streets, open restaurants. I see a person with Dan T. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to talk about um, I'm a daily bike rider over Rivington Street up Avenue, First Avenue and then down Second Avenue. And uh, I, I, the encroachment into the bike lane, especially the parking protected bike lanes. I love the restaurants being there, but there's a slow drift every day getting into the buffer lane and then into the bike lane of the restaurants. I don't have enough time to 311 report all of them. I report the ones that are obvious. So I just wanted to make DOT aware of that. There's also a few on Rivington Street on the bike lane side that uh, I don't even know if they're registered open restaurants because I don't think DOT would approve them going from their sidewalk into the bike lane. It's a, it's, there's no parking on that side of, on the south side of Rivington Street. And then um, I also wanted to just uh, log a complaint overall about the Lower East Side Partnerships management of the super block uh, of Rivington, Stanton, Orchard and Ludlow, um, especially the blocks where the LES partnership is not uh, actually the management. Uh, they've, they've not done a good job of maintaining the barriers. Uh, cars move them and they don't get replaced. Uh, today, I noticed that it was moved from Essex and Rivington to Ludlow and Rivington. And uh, that's a big problem. Um, thank you. Jennifer, could you respond to that, please? Sure. Um, for the barriers for those open streets, I'll, I'll address that with the Lower East Side Partnership. Um, when you mentioned about the encroachment in the bike lane, this is on Rivington, right? That, are, are they in the bike lane or they just have something that is pretty much hanging over or something? Because that's something we could definitely take a look. There's one, and I'll, I'll report this one to 311, but there's one on Rivington between uh, Norfolk and Essex that is just, mm -hmm. it's halfway into the bike lane from the south side where there's no parking. So it's not a, I'm guessing that they're not even registered with the open city, uh, I mean the open mm -hmm. restaurants program. Okay. All right, thank you, Dan. Um, Hope. Hi there, thank you. Um, so, you know, people have already mentioned some of the things that the Orchard Street Block Association, so where Orchard Street and Ludlow and Allen between Delancey and Canal Street, um, people have said some of our biggest concerns and complaints. Um, you know, that being that this has gone out through the bids as opposed to the residents, there was never any outreach to residents around which of these streets would be open and if you know the residents wanted that we're all for businesses being successful and i would assert that you know what's now becoming hell square two that area there between orchard ludlow broom and um delancey and grand uh probably has one of the highest 311 complaint ratios in the city before this even happened so why that block would be the one i'm getting so many complaints and just frustration from residents about how loud it is how many people are always out there and that quite frankly reporting to 311 has become a joke because nothing happens and you know like susan has mentioned it's all on the residents to enforce basically um 
anything that's going on in our area, the loud music and those type of things. So I guess my question becomes, um, you know, what is the expected 311 response time and what, who else should we be reaching out to because we're kind of going in circles trying to find the right people to get to and it's now like there's this laundry list of people that we should try and contact or notify for anything um anytime there's a unsafe or loud conditions so i would say that um for loud music um loud music will definitely be i think it will go to between nypd and dep so that would not be even DOT to address. Um, I would say that for DOT, anything that has to do with the restaurant and their setup of the, you know, the outdoor dining, like their tables and chairs, their barriers, that would be something that you could definitely reach out to our office. Um, you know, a lot of other issues, you know, when they get routed to the other agencies, they have their own way of, of handling them. I, I can't even say what are their response times are at this point. And then do you but have- they do they do receive it, they do get it on their queue, they do have someone to eventually come out and take a look to see what the issue is. Because I know, um, uh, I would say recently, uh, SLAs did see something because they were out there to inspect the restaurant and I guess, you know, because they have the liquor license, they noticed something that we may have overlooked, so they sent it to us and we took a look at it and then we, you know, for me, I had to quickly, you know, make sure one of my inspectors go and take a look to say, hey, you know, what they're doing is actually incorrect please help them correct it or we can have to give them a cease and desist letter because they were set up in a way where the fire hydrant was actually kind of blocked. Yeah. So that's, no, I, uh, across the street from me, I had to make like six complaints before anybody did it. It may be somebody else also, but I just know that like things that go unheard and it becomes extremely frustrating as a resident, especially like I said, if anybody had asked any actual resident of this neighborhood, if this was a choice that we would want, um, it would have been a resounding no, probably. So that's, again, you know, just a frustration from the residents of this community about how this was all rolled out and how it was chosen. So, yeah. Thank you, Hope. Is there anything else you wanted to add or? No, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you for your Thank time. You. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Andy Gilbert, you're next up. Uh, go right ahead. Uh, hi, um, I wanted to mostly second the comments previously made about the NYPD extra legally usurping public space. Um, basically, I've, I mean, this is something that's gone on for a long time and not just related to this. Um, the entire, you know, area surrounding the 7th Precinct is nothing but illegally parked cars and clearly marked no stopping zones, taking up the sidewalk taking up every single inch of space that can possibly be parked in. There's either a cop or a friend of a cop with a PBA card. And this is, you know, ostensibly the DOT and the NYPD's internal affairs job. And, you know, I think the, uh, Ms. Long, I mean, she mentioned that, you know, maybe we should bring this up with the precinct as if the precinct cares in the slightest about enforcing the law, you know, the top leadership of the precincts are the people who are clearly okay with this since the entire road outside of every single precinct is a giant parking lot for cops personal vehicles and currently fifth street, um, you know, there is a there's been a police checkpoint 24 seven for a month and a half. This isn't like some oh, maybe there was a specific concern. There is a systematic every single precinct in the city is operating illegal checkpoints where there is a specific city law that says that the NYPD can't close the street for more than 48 hours. They've done it for a month and a half now. And you know, maybe if you're a white guy who looks like you belong there, they're not gonna stop you on the street and demand to see your ID before they let you through the barricades. But I've at least had mixed experiences. They've, let, they've not let me through a few times. They have let me through a few times. What if you're a guy on the block or you're trying to go to a restaurant on that block and they decide you need an ID to get on that block and you refuse to do that and suddenly you're being belligerent and the police beat the shit out of you in public. They're flagrantly violating the law and the DOT's response being go talk to the um, precinct captain. The precinct captain's the one who's instructed them to illegally close down the street. We need the DOT going out there and taking their barricades away. We need 
the you need the mayor of the city to have a spine and to you know run the city but that's not going to happen so absent that i mean i would be strongly in support of you know the committee at the very least you know passing some sort of um statement bringing this to the full board to build you know the modicum of political um political you know capital that we need to make a change on this to say nothing of you know placard corruption and all the other things that have been swept in the wayside in the transportation sphere that the police also do daily thank you andy um i, I know we're going to reach out to local city elected officials on a lot of this issue um, over the next day or so i know susan already brought that up um, I think that definitely it's going to probably be something that comes right back to this committee that we may have to put a resolution for at some point. So thank you for your comments. I don't know if Jennifer wanted to respond to anything or I, if, I, if you would like me to move on to the next speaker. I don't have anything else to say. Okay, thank you. Uh, Laura, I see that you have your hand up. Go right ahead. Thanks very much. So I will add to the Fifth Street situation that I'm concerned about the businesses on that block because it is off-putting to try to patronize them and they've already had enough obstacles. Um, I have not really checked in with them in depth recently, but it, I, I will do that and get back to you with any additional information I can have, but that is an important consideration. And then regarding the residential complaints um, with operators who are just doing whatever they want. Um, it is very burdensome on residents. I completely agree with Susan. None of us, and with Dan saying, you know, I, I can't possibly 311 all of them. It's, there's, there are too many. So, and then at the same time, I have problems from businesses with a little bit of inconsistency in DOT inspectors and then DOB, which doesn't seem to give you any information, just tells you you're doing something wrong and sends a cure order. So now I, I completely appreciate with Jennifer's situation, it's, she's DOT, she's not these other agencies, but it is a DOT program. So is there, and it was all, it was developed in tandem with these other agencies. So is there some sort of interagency liaison that, um, can, can improve the response of, of, of maybe noise complaints as opposed to DOT handles what's in the road and they're really doing a very thorough job of that. But for these other agencies, is there an interagency liaison that could improve response um, from your office? At the moment, we don't have that interagency liaison. Um, that's something I could definitely ask. I mean, I, I yeah. I don't have a, a definitive answer to say that we will have one. Um, that's something I'll, like I said, I'll just bring it back and we'll see if there is some someone that can fill in that role. Thank you, that would be very helpful. All right, um, thank you to the public for all your questions and your comments tonight. There's a lot of things that um, we have concerns on with open streets, uh, certain streets being closed off by the NYPD. And um, we have a lot of things we have to talk about. That being said, I'm going to pivot back to the committee for any final round of questions for Jennifer. If not, I'm going to wrap up this section of the agenda. Does the committee have any final questions for Jennifer if for comments or concerns on open streets, open restaurants? I've got crickets going once, twice, three times sold. Jennifer, thank you for coming on tonight. I appreciate it. Um, thank you to the public for your questions in this Q&A session. I'm sure there will be, this is not the end of this, as I said in May, it was just the beginning and we're still getting more and more information as this pandemic continues to grow throughout the country. Thank God in the city that we're kind of doing th things better now. Um, thank you, Jennifer, for coming on. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. That closes that agenda item for today. And that means we are moving to district needs. And hopefully we can finalize this up tonight or as much as we possibly can. Sure, Paul. 
Yeah, yes, it well, did. Before we move to that, uh, I mean, maybe it should come later because you've, you've got the agenda laid out, but I would like to move to amend the Avenue B resolution. I think that it will be easy for us to do. I would like to add another resolve clause, which I already drafted. Do you want to do it now while there's some more public? Because I'm sure we're going to bore them to death when we start talking about needs. <laughs> Are you saying we don't, you don't want to beat them into submission and then come back to it? Um, yeah, let's 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 knock it out now. Okay, I just posted it for people to read, but I would like to add this further resolved in the second uh, as a second clause. Further resolved, whatever that while considering those options, the city should reconsider whether the open street installation on Avenue B could be extended from Houston Street to East 14th Street as originally proposed. And the reason that I would like to make it explicit is it's kind of implied in one of the bullets where we talk about the lane of traffic, adding a dedicated lane, but in several of the options, they would be able to reconsider it um, and extend down to, you know, the only reason it doesn't go all the way down there is because they wanted to create a route up from 2nd to 6th Street. So if they come up with another way to get them all the way to 10th, they could, they could do the same treatment all the way down to Houston, I believe. So we're asking them to just to consider that as well without mucking with the bullets above. Susan, you have your hand up. Yeah, we didn't. The reason we said Second Street and not Houston is because the fire department has to turn right on Second Street to go to, you know, um, for accessing Houston. They would they would have to they would have to remove the the western lane too by starting at second street instead of houston it alleviated having to um take parking or remove that one lane on so that they could go south okay so let's modify it say from east second street to east 14th street yeah we could still say as originally proposed even if we originally proposed houston but okay correct all right since we're going back to this uh do i have to vote on it again david i'm, I'm trying to go back or do Sorry. We, do we have to vote back? Do we have to vote back on this now since you've we've amended it? Or well, we would. Well, do we all agree that that this is? And then no, then we would, then we would immediately close it and go to, to the district needs. I'm only opening it for this one amendment. But did everyone agree to it? Yeah, that's the question. Does everybody agree to this amendment? Or if I don't hear anything, I think it'll be a yes. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yes. Sounds like it's the popular opinion. All right, we're good. Let's go to district needs. Thank you, David. Michelle, do you want me to pull it up, or do you have do you have it? I've got it. Okay. One second. All right, before we go into finalizing anything, uh, Susan, did you send me anything else after um, we spoke? No, I, I have uh, statistics to update the noise section. I just wasn't able to do it this afternoon. So that will I'll have to give to you uh, next month. So it looks like we're going to be coming back next month for district needs, right? Well, uh, just, you could, I mean, just that one little section. Okay. All right, so we, we've kind of done some uh, revisions. It looks a little different from what June uh, looked like and how we first started it. And I think we, you know, we caught it at a bad time that on in June, and we, we thought about it and then think about it. And you know, this is a little bit more updated. Jim, I want to thank Jim that out in the office for updating the stats and Susan. Um, we've added some more stuff. We've cleaned up some more stuff. Uh, David, you, I, let me pull up yours when you when I get a chance. I know you sent over the environment section. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking for it. I'm 
Danke. Okay. Uh, let's start looking through this and see, yes. Susan, any guidance you want to offer of the committee right now? Or? Well, um, what we did is, members. I'm sorry. So what we did is, um, and you and I had a long conversation about this, is we went through the minutes from last month and right. basically followed the direction from the minutes from last month. Um, for accountability and safety, we made very little change. We're still going to um, update that 9.1 stat if we can. Um, most of our statistics are from the Furman Center at NYU. They usually publish their statistics in May. This year, they're very late for obvious reasons. So um, we're still looking at 9.1% is from last year. So we still need to um, update that. But I think the committee was happy with um, with that paragraph. So if there's no questions on that, we could, or comment on that, we could go to the next one. Committee, any questions on accessibility and safety? I, I didn't have any questions for it. Um, I know it was just gonna be a, an updating of the stat. Um, any committee members have questions about this specific portion of accessibility and safety? Well, I, have, right. I have no question. Okay, thank you, Tariq. All right, um, pedestrian traffic safety, let's move to that. Okay, so if we could scroll up a little bit because it's bigger. Um, so sure. what, we, what we did on this is we just went into the research, the statistics, um, and updated this, this section by describing the current dangerous pedestrian areas and the current um, motor vehicle um, problem areas. And it's very specific. And it's just a description of the problems. Can we scroll it up a little bit? So could you just scroll down a little bit so we just add, see the whole thing? Yeah, so what we did is described the updated problem areas and um, and said that we need pedestrian safety improvements and traffic calming in these areas, which is basically the same ask that we had last year. We're just updating the areas. And we will, in the final one, we'll have all this cited, you know, where these statistics are from. Copy, I like this version a lot better than the previous one with a little bit more specifics. Um, does the committee have any questions on the pedestrian tra traffic safety portion of, of uh, the district needs statement? Well, I noticed we used, just, I'm just looking at this. I know we use CB3. Is there a CD3? Is that community district three? And then, yeah. So Great. the community board are the 50 members um, and CD is a geographical district. Thank you, Susan. Good question. Any other any other questions? Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's move on down. We're good with pedestrian traffic safety. All right. Um. So this one we updated per the minutes last time, um, and um, basically put in the major issues that this committee has been dealing with and voting on. Which is the coordination and planning at large right. scale construction projects, mainly down on the Lansing, but all over the place in the district. Um, I think a lot of it is kind of rehashing what we said in the previous district statement, but it still remains true and stronger, if anything. Um, delivery and curbside management as well. Um, did you want to move on to that as well, uh, Susan? You want to? Sure. Well, that's been um, that's just been an issue we've kind of touched on. The office certainly gets complaints every day on, and it seems to me just a given that we are supposed to have some kind of plan for this. Right. 
Um, inner city bus management. Um, well, let me go back. Uh, questions from the committee on the first two, coordination and planning on large scale and delivery and curbside management based on what you see up on the screen. No, it looks, looks good. It's a draft, right? Because I, yeah. see, I see it. No, it's, no, actually, it was not a draft. So if you have any comments, you should make them. Okay, well, mitigating these problems, period, period, coordinated planning with DOT and other city agencies, there's an editing error near the oh, last two well, lines oh, of that section. Yeah, we're still going to be looking at type, well, yes, the I spelling and typos will we'll fix. But if okay. you want to change text, you should say so now. Yeah, okay, no, no change in text. It's just that sentence okay. is not a sentence. Got it. Yes, now we'll proofread. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Inner city bus management. Any questions on that? You want to go into that a little bit, Susan, or no? Yeah, I just updated it based on what has happened in the last year. Um, we, the, we've been having meetings for maybe 10 years on this issue, and this reflects where, um, where the, this has gone in the last year. Everything has stopped because of COVID. Um, just sort of FYI, two bus companies have gone out of business because of COVID, and there currently is no issue now because people aren't, aren't using the buses. But what we're concentrating on now is um, the adjudication of summonses. And that's what's reflected in this paragraph. And we had met with the sheriff, right? Was it right in January, Susan? Right. Uh, I think that right. was, yeah, the last time there was a meeting. This is what they were working on. And everything stopped, you know. We'll see how many buses are in business after this is over when we figure out what to do next. Correct. All right, let's go down. Any questions uh, from the committee on inner city bus or lack thereof now? No questions. Right. Public transportation, Susan, take it away. Um, that I believe is almost completely unchanged. Um, the 11% we still have to update, but other than that, I don't think there's a single word that was changed from last month, or last year. Committee, based on what you're seeing, should there be any changes to this that you've seen, that you're reading, looks? In the very first sentence, the word though doesn't really, it's not a very strong connector between those two thoughts. I think it tries to emphasize that, you know, we're underserved and this is a problem because, is there a better word than though? It. This is, this, I can't is what you, this is what you wrote, David, a couple oh, years I, ago. I, 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 I'm not a writer. I'm just now noticing that that word is not strong. Yeah. I don't have a good idea. CD3 is underserved. Um, um, well, we could actually just say, um, actually, we can just, that. no, to rewrite that. We could actually start off with the updated statistic. We actually, CB3 uses less cars to to um, commute to work than I think um, than any other, or we're in the top two of the all 59 boards in the city. So we can rewrite that to say, start with the figures and then say we're underserved. So Michelle, could you maybe just um, mark that needs rewrite Thank you. Is there anything else that we want to change, or is that that it? Was that the only thing that was kind of sticking out there? Today? Was that that word? Yeah. It gets okay. better and better every year. All right. Let's scroll down. So, Susan, you don't have the road section yet, correct? No. This is. This is. Oh, this is the. It, it. it was the noise that. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So this is rewritten. Um, You just need to get the D, the stats in there. Let's I'm going to cite them. I actually have the uh, the you stats. You do have. Them. I just okay. I do. This was done from the new st statistics. Um, I just have to actually cite them to document it. All right. Um, no, give. I need what I'm saying. I need to give the citation. 
Copy. Copy. All right. Thank you. And I need to fill in um, our rat reduction program is a five year, it's funded for five years, and I don't remember when it started. So I have to fill in that uh, XX years. Okay. All right, committee, any questions on the rodents portion of district needs? Thank you, Susan, for updating that stuff. All right, um, Michelle, I am going to share my screen right now because I'm gonna pull up David's version of the environment portion. So I'm... So while he does that, before your eyes pop out, it's lengthy and it's technical. And so I apologize, but I did, I did research to try to find sources for problems. I think it could use a rewrite by someone who's better than me, who can write things more compelling and briefly. Uh, my challenges were, there are three types of pollution that you know, they're causing problems, air pollution, extreme heat and noise pollution. And there are solutions that are out there. There are transportation problems like the need for uh, congestion pricing and which the board has never voted on and the need for uh, um, which would largely address the Grand and Canal Street problem, Grand and Clinton Street problem. And there's also a problem on Canal Street caused by the Verrazano Narrow Bridge, which is in another community board. Um, okay, that's one source of solutions. The other kind of solution is trees. It would really address some climate change problems. It would address extreme heat. It would address some of those pollution problems because trees will help to take those airborne pollutants out of the air. Therefore, it's a mess. But I do have bullet points there as well. I'm sorry, I do have footnotes as well to source documents. Yeah, I see. Yep. We have those up. Um, I'm gonna leave this right here. Also, the noise complaint section below that, that I didn't incorporate at all in here kind of is that maybe this ought to be three separate bullet points and like an overall one, not bullet points, headings. An overall heading saying there are three kinds of, 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 of problems going on. And then air pollution, climate change and or extreme heat really. And the third, uh, noise pollution could be sort of subheadings and it, and Jim's uh, work could be incorporated along with noise pollution. So Dave, could I ask, do you, since I haven't had a chance to read it, does this refer specifically or have any reference um, to how we see these problems in CB3? I mean, I see um, you're giving certain um, streets which are reference problems in certain areas. But when you talk about climate change, noise pollution, we no, there's, certainly there's will. No way you can. Cli climate change, it's, uh, it's happening. I, there were stats about things like the amount of tree, the, they've estimated, the Forestry Service estimates that the, the amount of temperature reduction that is happening in CD3 okay. because of, but it, it becomes much more, it's really in the weeds. And you're talking about you know fractions of a degree Fahrenheit. Uh, I do have in there about the land area, which is currently tree covered, and from satellite imagery, the land area that does not have trees but could support plants. Plant and you have area. that in here? You have that in that here? That is in there, buried okay. at the very end of that second bullet. Okay. Because I think it's important to say this is, this is where we need to do this. Yeah. I, I really think that expanding tree cover is a very doable thing. I mean, the city's been doing it. And the studies, these two studies I reference are from 2018. So you know I know that they've added trees recently. There's currently a tree task force. The city is uh, to, miti to mitigate the trees taken out of East River. They're actually planting, I forget how many, but thousands of trees. And there's a tree task force that we have a member on that is looking at where to, um, where to plant those trees. Right, and they've been rolling out trees. This has been a program, the Million Trees, I think, for many years. And they recently yep, got to over. our blocks. And we got a bunch of trees planted in the last year and a half. Um, it's all good. And it will reduce um, airborne particulates and, and, and nitrous oxides. You know, Susan, I didn't include it here, but when they, uh, a couple of years ago, maybe, maybe five now, when they 
changed the regulations about uh, burners in buildings and doing, mm -hmm. um, it made the, the sulfur dioxide problem almost disappear. It's now the same 2018 study actually dropped the details of that out because they couldn't detect it at most of their locations. They've got 100 or 200 locations around the city where they, they've been doing measurements. This is the city's community air survey. That's a really big win. And um, in the interest of brevity, I didn't even talk about it here. But it's down to levels that, that you see uh, like in the Adirondacks or something. Okay, so I'm just looking at that. Um, so do you say where there's tree cover lacking, where in Community Board 3 there's tree cover lacking? Do you give the geographic areas? Uh, they don't. They don't really. They don't really say that. They, it was in a table where these numbers were. And in fact, the oh. 27.3 is me interpreting what the table said. It said 293 acres, I think, or plantable area that don't contain trees. And I looked up the area of of the district, which is like 1,100 acres, and did a division. This would have been helpful um, to know if we could know where where it's needed. Yeah, but. I think the, I think the tree trees. has a within their trees program has a map that tags all the trees that they know the, of. the city does but yeah yeah it's the, I think the point here is that they could we, we could ask for a doubling we, you know somebody a doubling of, of street tree cover if we got up to 40 percent we'd be up to what some of the neighborhoods in the outer boroughs have which have like a half a degree of Fahrenheit a reduction of temperature on, on the extreme heat days, not every day. But those extreme heat days, which are getting worse, we could have a, a full half degree uh, reduction in, in, in peak temperature if they could double the number of trees. So could, do you think it would be useful at the end of each bullet point to have a line saying what the city should be doing? Maybe. I kind of think we could make these bullet points separate headings, a subheading for air, air pollution, subheading for extreme heat events or climate change, one or the other. And then it would be easier. It's getting longer. Well, I really you, think it just, needs to be written by somebody else. I can, I'm great at taking words out. I rewrite stuff and look the next day. I'll, I'll do it with you. All right, I'll send it over to you, Susan. What about the noise pollution when you, you scroll that up onto the screen? Um, okay, so if I'm largely you're talking about what you wrote document, or what I have written, which isn't about what well, is happening here, but this is something that had never really occurred to me. The second sentence, in young children, exposure to noise can cause problems with reading, comprehension, concentration, memory, and attention span. A couple sources for that. That actually is a direct quote from, I realize now what is bullet, uh, footnote three, but there's a whole study about this by the EPA in bullet point four. Um, and so for instance, the, the kids around the Grand Street area, if they're being disrupted by that traffic all night, it's basically sleep deprivation is causing these problems, and this is not good for kids. It's not good for adults either. No. Well, the adults, it causes things like high blood pressure, you know, ulcers, stress-related illnesses is what it leads so to. So what we captured in, in the, from 311 for noise pollution, we captured commercial noise, which is bars, um, we captured residential noise, um, which I was surprised. I thought that was going to be mostly the East Village with all the roof parties, but it was actually, we looked at it by zip codes. So it was actually increased all over. And then we looked at um, street and sidewalk noise, um, which I'm not even sure. Is traffic complaints not a category? Yeah, so that would, that would be, I assume, horn honking would be included in there. I'll have to check that. But those are the three areas we looked at. Residential, um, commercial, which is bar noise, and then street and sidewalk. Should we put the, that 
final bullet point that you have, David, about noise pollution under the noise category, Susan? Do you want to yeah, separate I, that I, out? I think it would be good to c combine them. We have this paragraph, and then below that, in CD3, this is what we're this is what we're seeing. Okay, I'm going to stop my share so Michelle can go back on to okay. the original document, and I'll send this over to you after the okay. meeting is over. Sure. Okay, so that noise is going to be rewritten and with the three areas of complaints that I uh, mentioned to you. I'll warn you that I plagiarized that last thing heavily. It almost comes word for word from the New York City Department of Health site, which is in a bullet point. That's fine. As long as we cited it, it shows we did the work. Okay. All right. I'll send that over to Susan, so we can clean that up. Um, thank you, David, for that rewrite of uh, environment. Appreciate it. I, um, public safety, this is something that wasn't in the district need statement last year. Um, speaking with Susan the other day, I did decide to draw up a paragraph, and I know they edited it a little bit for me as well, because it was something we, we had kind of scrambled our heads over on how to write up this specific statement, so. Um, I just added the first sentence in front of what you wrote. Oh, no wonder it looks familiar. Um, <laughs> that, you know, there have been significant amount of complaints uh, to the community board regarding homeless and others on, on, on the street and groups, particularly complaints of open drug use from working with NYPD and homeless outreach. It appears that these adult men are from several populations, homeless drug users, um, the recent reforms in the criminal justice system and the release of the inmates from jails throughout the city due to the pandemic have exacerbated the need for more services for this population in CB3 beyond homeless outreach. There's a need for a stronger and more streamlined communication between the Department of Corrections and other services, such as the Department of Homeless Services, as well as other city agencies to secure the needs of this population as they reintegrate into CB3. I think we kind of just really wanted to hammer home the need for stronger communication, especially when people are released from any of the jail facilities, uh, any of maybe even the upstate facilities and come back into the district and what their their needs assessments are because uh, their needs are important and how do we put it all together. Um, so I think that was something I needed to come back into the statement. I welcome all edits. I welcome anything to make it stronger, but that was kind of how do we put it as a need statement without making it a budget priority or something like that. So I brought this this whole issue up at my district service today and Department of Homeless Services and the mayor's office was there insist that that they have a placement of for every person that is released from incarceration um, and homeless outreach actually um, confirm that. Somehow I don't believe it or I don't believe, I believe they have an address, but I don't believe it's happening. Um, another thing just sort of FYI that I found out today is one of the reasons you're seeing so many people more on the streets is a lot of the programming, including substance abuse programming, um, is closed because of COVID. So people are big, basically the most vulnerable people are thrown on the streets on their own. Yeah. Um, I also got, um, did get some updated crime statistics from the Furman Center, um, which I'll try to incorporate in this. Yeah, I also, you know, in this statement, I didn't want to like cross over to any of the needs that was, it, already incorporated into health and human services and right. their statements. Um, I kind of just want to limit it, its scope to public safety and not like go into all kinds of things about homelessness when that's already kind of addressed that health and human services. Uh, Michelle, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just want to say, um, could we refer to, um, I don't want to refer to people by their, their current situation. Um, like I think typically you would say people experiencing homelessness or or, or, or people experiencing drug 
abuse issues or something like that. So if we, if there's no objection to, to doing that. Absolutely, more. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I also make a suggestion. Yeah, just give us a second, Lisa, so Michelle can finish this up. Is that okay? Yeah, that's that's fine. That's perfect. Uh, go ahead, Lee. Sorry. Um, the first sentence, the, the end of the first sentence, homeless and others on the street in groups. Who are we... Who, who are you referring to as others um, on the street in groups? Because I think that may be, that could be problematic. If we're, we're not talking about groups of people hanging out. Um, and I well, think we are. Be mis are. Are we? So just. Yeah. So when you, we have large, like um, second, second Avenue between, I'd say third and fifth street is one particular area where you have a number of homeless people but there are other people there who um, are not sleeping there at night. They're not homeless. And they're not sleeping there at night. Um, they are, some of them are substance abusers. Some of them are preying on the homeless to sell them drugs. Um, they're there during the day, um, particularly now, which I didn't realize today, you know, that there's uh, a lot of the programming is closed. But yeah, there's like, you could have a group of 10, 12 people and two or three are sleeping there at night. That's why when people refer to all these groups of homeless people, they're not all homeless. Some of them are homeless and some of them are not. I'm, I, I understand that. Um, I'm just worried that the wording of that makes it appear that there are a lot of complaints about groups of people in the community, groups hanging well, out. And that's if not- If you wanna suggest a- um, we're very open to the changes. Yeah. Um, I'll send something to you. Okay. Well, yeah, the problem is it's not loitering. I, I myself, as I walk around in that area, I've seen, um, well, twice in one day, but numerous occasions, uh, basically people shooting up uh, mm -hmm. on the street, like not disguised at all. And also it happens on my block, although that mm -hmm. guy's moved along but there's a guy who used to bring people to my community garden I run um, and I would chase him away from there. He ended up living on the block during the worst months of COVID. Um, anyway, it was really horrifying. I never complained to the office or anything, but it was pretty horrifying to see that he was uh, assisting people in shooting up. Um, yeah, I mean, there's no question who these people, that these people are homeless, are other people who are, uh, abusing substance abusers. There are other people who are preying on them by selling them, particularly K2 and other things. Um, the wording, I agree, this wording was right, thrown right. together really So quickly. what I'm trying to get at is that, uh, I mean, I don't want to call down the law on these people, but I would like to call up help to get the situation dealt with. And the, the complaints coming to the office are of both types. Is that well, helping? We are doing that. Oh, I know. Lee, yeah. is that helpful? <laughs> yes, it is. All right, thank but you. We still have to we still have to fix the wording. I'll figure something out and send it to you. Okay. Thanks, Lee. Uh, any other questions about public safety? Uh, this new paragraph. No, I mean maybe we don't want to put it in our public safety statement, but. If I was writing my own district needs, I would say that we need safe injection sites in New York City, and that will solve that problem. I'm put not that in the human services. You can put that in the human services. Yeah, it's, it could be done. It could be done. It would need more work. Um, it's it's been discussed. It hasn't been accepted yet, but it's certainly been. I think even two years ago, it's being discussed. Yeah, I've been in the meetings. Not, oh, I meant in the city, city agencies. Oh, yeah, I know that too. Okay, oh, that's right, you have Mark. All right, Susan, do I, I, don't, I think that's the end of it right there. Um, I think it is, right? 
it's not completely finalized. Uh, are we, do you think we'll come back next month or? Um, well, we have to work on the environment section. We have to update the noise, which will become part of the environment section. We're going mm -hmm. to do some rewriting to public safety. And is that it? That seems to be it. That just seems to be the final sets of cl cleanups. Other than that, I okay. think this is pretty good. Yeah, because when we work on this, I, we really go back to the minutes and kind of go, and the minutes were really quite very clear last time, you know, what yeah. needed to be done. So I think we just need to clean up these final last couple of uh, environment noise and public safety, and I think we're, we're solid at this point. Yeah, so we should be able to finalize this next month, not vote on it, but finalize it. And um, we may have one transportation issue next month. Oh, okay. All right. All right, I think, um, does the committee have any other questions, any potential edits before we go to uh, our adjournment? I just have a quick question. Sure, Wendy, right? Yes, hi. So then, um, will the community board members be getting like the, the edited final document? Because I'd love to like look over this slowly, like get a better understanding of like, I guess like everything and have more time to process it. Well, I mean, I think we better talk about procedure because if people are gonna start you know, I thought we just finalized most of it. And um, if people are going to start rewriting and, and wanting to go back to it, we'd need to talk about a process. Oh, okay, gotcha. See, we've been doing this for like three or four months. Mm -hmm. All right, gotcha. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, any other questions, comments, or concerns? Would it, you know, I would say, you know, if people, I mean, we can, you know, send this out to the committee mark draft and if people, I, you know, I certainly hope people wouldn't start rewriting it because I don't think we could deal with it. But if people had an important point or two to make, Paul, you think we could do that next month? Sure, I could send it out ahead of time and before August if there's a... Uh if there's any points that they want, uh, that the committee wants to bring in. I know for the two newest members, this is the first time you're looking at this document with us. So if you want to just take that look over, I'll send it out a couple weeks before committee and whatever questions you have or edits you may potentially want, you can do it at that point so that we're, we're not rushing to put it together right before committee meeting. But we're talking like one or two points. We're not talking about no. editing or rewriting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if there's a couple we things get that- get a chance to start at the beginning next year. <laughs> okay, Mich Michelle, uh, or Lee is actually taking, whoever, someone will send this edited uh, section back to me. Right. Okay. Um, so before we close it up, Michelle, you have the resolution. If you just send that over to Lee, so yep. we can put it into the minutes. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. That's about it. Um, before we adjourn, I want to say welcome again to Wendy and Tariq and welcome to the committee. Uh, we're almost done. Um, I'm ready to call for an adjournment. Anybody have a motion for it? You can just vote. You don't need to You motion. can just vote. All right, Lee, go ahead. Take us home. All right, Paul Rangel. Yes. Michelle Coopersmith. Yes. Lee Berman, yes. David Crane. Yes. Uh, Felicia Krushank. Ellen Lau. Yes. Uh, hang on, Wendy, you're not on this one. Just hang on. Uh, Wendy Lee. Yes. And Tariq Ramos. Yes. All right. We are adjourned for the month of July. Thank you everyone for your, your all your cooperation and work today. Thank you. Take care. All right.